The alert integration in Home Assistant provides an easy way to automate notifications. So in this video, we're going to cover what alerts are, how to set them up, and I'll share some of the use cases I have for alerts in my smart home. Plus, I have a new way of sharing my configuration that will hopefully make things easier for videos like this. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. So I decided for videos like this, I was going to try to eliminate as much of the confusion caused by the technical debt I built up over the years in my home assistant setup. Which means any configuration I walk through in videos like this going forward will have its own GitHub repo and be based on a new home assistant installation. I'm also going to try to include annotations in the configuration files. And in addition to sharing them on GitHub, provide a zip file of those files for those that want to download them that way. So if all of this makes it easier, let me know. Anyway, enough of this housekeeping stuff, let's talk alerts. Alerts are simply pre-built automations in Home Assistant that deliver notifications. They're currently used by around 1% of the Home Assistant user base, which means there's a pretty good chance you're not using them today. But they do come in handy because they allow you to quickly build an automation that triggers on a specific condition then delivers notifications on either a dynamic or static interval until that condition has cleared. And as a bonus, they can send you another message that the condition has cleared, closing the loop on that alert. So you could set up an alert to let you know that the garage door is open, and then remind you every 15 minutes until that garage door is closed, which can be useful if it's 10 p.m. and you forgot to check to see if the garage was closed. Or you could just troll your teenage kid and spam their phone every one minute to let them know that it's now past curfew and their person entity is still not marked home. Anyway, the beauty of alerts is they come part of Home Assistant Core. But it's not a perfect solution because it does have some limitations. One of the limitations is alerts only use notification services to send their notifications. Which means if you want Home Assistant to verbalize the alert through a text-to-speech service, you're going to have to do a little extra work to get Home Assistant to recognize your text-to-speech service as a notification service. It also means that you can't fire off a script or take other action based on that condition, which means that they're pretty much useful only for notifications. And another limitation is you can't set up an alert to use multiple conditions. Say the garage door is open and the sun is down. They only check a single entity to see if its current state is equal to a specific value. So if you need an alert to fire based on complex criteria, you're either going to be building some template sensors or using some helpers with some other automations. And perhaps the more confusing one, there's no way to silence an alert other than clearing its condition. And perhaps the more confusing one, there's no way to silence an alert other than clearing the condition that triggered it in the first place. The Home Assistant documentation mentions there is the ability to acknowledge an alert, but I've yet to be able to get that to work in my Home Assistant setup, and in my searches have not been able to find anyone else that has gotten that to work either. So for now, it appears the only way to silence an alert is to clear that condition. But if these limitations give you pause on using alerts, don't worry, I'm going to give you some examples of how we can get around these limitations. But first, we need to tell Home Assistant that we want to use alerts. Like I said, I'm going to be doing this on a fresh install of Home Assistant, which as of this recording means version 2022.3.5. The only changes I've made to this setup prior to this video are, one, I turned on advanced mode for my user, so I get those cool options to refresh parts of the configuration without restarting. Second, I connected my phone to this instance using the Home Assistant companion app, so I have a notification method. And third, I've installed three add-ons, Terminal and SSH, Samba Share, and Studio Code Server. Of these three, Studio Code Server is the only one I'm going to be using in this video because we need to make some YAML changes and I'm going to be doing that right in the browser. If your Home Assistant is not at that same state or you wanna know how to install those add-ons, watch my recent Home Assistant 101 video where I cover how to make those changes. And again, there's a link in the description where you can find the configuration we're about to walk through, which you can download to your system or even just use it to copy and paste from. Since this is a new install of Home Assistant, we need to define a place for our alerts to live since there isn't one defined out of the box. And we do that in our configuration.yaml file, which we can access using that Studio Code Server add-on. 
In the configuration.yaml file, we can set up alerts in two different ways. First, we can simply point Home Assistant to a YAML file. So we define alert colon space exclamation include space alerts.yaml. This means, of course, we have to create an alerts.yaml file, which we can do by hitting the Add File button and typing in alerts.yaml. I've already created that file, so I'm just going to cancel this. The other option is we could just dump those alerts right into this configuration file instead of including another YAML file. Here I have that version commented out, but you would use the same alert colon heading, but then under that just define the alerts. Once you have your method ready, we just need to save our changes. Okay, after we've made our changes to our configuration.yaml file, we need to restart Home Assistant so that Home Assistant can see those changes. But let's hold off for a moment until we have something in this new file. So let's open that alerts.yaml file where I have some examples already made. The way alerts work is they monitor an entity watching for a specific state, and while in that state, the alert is on. And the format looks like this. Unfortunately, you can't define these in the UI yet, so you're going to have to do all of this here in this YAML file. But it's pretty simple. There's only a handful of things you need to add to get an alert up and running. First, of course, is a name, and in this case, I've named this one Simple Garage After Dark. Message is the notification we're going to send, and again, in this case, the alert will send Garage Open After Dark to our notification services. Done Message is the notification that gets sent when the condition clears, and this one isn't required. You only have to include this Done Message if you want to be notified when the condition clears. Entity ID is the entity this alert is going to be watching, and state is the condition. So in this case, when the binary sensor garage door has a state of open, this alert is going to be active. Repeat is the number of minutes we want to repeat the notifications. Here I put five, which means every five minutes we're going to get a notification with our message that says the garage open after dark. Can acknowledge is supposed to be set so that this could be silenced, and when the value is true, in theory, you should be able to silence this repeating notification without clearing the condition. But as I mentioned before, I've not found a way to do that, so I'm not real sure that it matters whether you set this to true or false. The skip first option here tells the alert to skip the first notification, which would happen as soon as the condition was true. So when this option is set to true, the first notification would be sent five minutes after the garage door was open. And notifiers is a list of all the notification services you want to send that message to. In this case, I'm just using the Home Assistant Companion app, and this is the notification service created by the mobile app integration. As you can see here, you leave off the notify dot part of the service name. But in this case, the notifications aren't really that useful. For example, there's nothing in this alert that tells it to only alert me when the garage door is open after dark. So for that, I like to use an input boolean helper like in this unauthorized access alert. Here you can see all the same information. We have a message and a done message. But the entity this alert is watching is my input boolean underscore security issue. And when it's on, we're going to repeat the notification every two minutes because it's a security issue. But since it is an input boolean, we need to automate the turning on of that helper. So to make this useful, we have to add an automation, like this security breach one. Here I have an automation that triggers when any of the doors are open and my sentry mode is on, which tells Home Assistant that it should be monitoring the doors. And if the security is armed and one of those doors open, then we turn on the security issue input boolean. Then you just have to turn off this input boolean to cancel the alert. This type of alert is handy to include as part of your security response. But here at Slacker Labs, we like to add snark to everything, and thankfully in alerts, you can. Here's a Slacker Labs version of that garage after dark alert. And we've added some snark to our message, where we can use templates to randomize the message that we get which means every five minutes we should get a different message. And we solved that after dark issue with the first version by using an input boolean. And to make that useful, we use an automation to ensure that it only turns on if it's after 10.30 p.m. and the garage door is of course open. And instead of having to manually turn off this input boolean to cancel the alert, we can just use an automation that any time the garage door is closed, we turn off that garage after dark input boolean. That way, as soon as the garage door is closed, this alert stops. But since we can use templates in the message, that means we can include sensor values too. 
like in this alert that goes off when my wife leaves work. This alert is meant to keep me updated as to her estimated time of arrival, since where we live, her commute might be 40 minutes one day and two and a half hours the next. So in this message, I include the duration attribute of the cat underscore ETT underscore home sensor. This sensor is built off the Waze integration, which is pretty handy for traffic stuff. Anyway, this one uses an input boolean and it repeats every 20 minutes, which means every 20 minutes, I get a message on my phone that tells me how many minutes until she arrives. And you'll notice I left off the done message because in this case, her physical presence takes place of the done message. And to turn on this alert, I use an automation that turns on the input boolean when she leaves the zone for her work. Not included here is an automation that turns off the cat travel monitor when she arrives home, which cancels the alert. And the input boolean also gives me a handy way to cancel this alert if for whatever reason it starts to go off and she's not actually on her way home yet. Since again, we can't acknowledge this alert to silence the notifications. And lastly, we can get really fancy and use the alert for our washer has finished notification. For the message, I use some if else statements to get a sense of how long the clothes have been waiting to move to the dryer. So I can include that in my message. Again, we use an input boolean for our entity to watch, which provides an easy way to override the alert and turn it off if we need to. And for the repeat option on this one, we use a dynamic range. Here we get a notification 15 minutes after the washer finished. Then the second notification comes 30 minutes after that notification, and the third 45 minutes after that. Then from that point on, they come every 45 minutes. To turn on this input boolean, I use an automation as well. When Home Assistant sees that the washer is finished, it turns on this input boolean. And then there's an automation that when the washing machine door opens, we turn off the input boolean, which cancels the alert. So up until now, we've just been sending text-based notifications, but with alerts, you can use text-to-speech services as well. However, before you can do that, you have to set up your text-to-speech service as a notification service. To create a text-to-speech notification service, we need to jump back into the configuration.yaml file. If you don't have a notify colon section in your configuration.yaml file, just add one. For any service we define under this, we need to give it a name. Platform will be TTS, and TTS underscore service will be where you put your text-to-speech service. I included three options in this example. Google Translate, which is added by default in new installations. But you could also use Amazon Polly, which is my preferred text-to-speech integration, or Nabucasa. Then for Media Player, tell it where you want the message to be played. And unfortunately, this has to be an entity ID. I really wish I could use my room presence sensor so I could have this message play in a room with people, but it doesn't appear that this integration likes to have templates in the entity ID field. So since it requires a specific media player, you'll have to define one for each room and then either send a notification everywhere or pick a room that might have people in it. But once you've built your text-to-speech notification service, you can add it to the list of notifiers on any of your alerts by simply including its name like this. Then after you have all of your alerts defined, save the file and restart Home Assistant. When Home Assistant comes back up, it will be monitoring those conditions and anytime they're true, we'll start sending you alerts. Anyway, I think that's enough for this video. Let me know in the comments if you think alerts are something you would use in your smart home or whether you would just stick with automations. And of course, if you have use cases for alerts that I didn't cover in this video, let us know those as well so we can steal them. If you want to support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find links to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, as well as affiliate links and even a link to buy me a coffee if you so choose in the description of this video. Or you can just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.